like to have a moment of silence for the people who are trying to hear us. We have under old business um, aquaculture lease moratorium. So last meeting we had a lady uh, here. Um, yeah. oh, Crystal, Crystal Canning. Crystal Canning, and oh, she yeah, she represents Protect Maine's Fishing Heritage Foundation. So she uh, gave a long presentation as to why she wanted a moratorium to be considered by the town. So I, I don't think anyone is prepared to make any decisions. The only uh, power that the Select Board has is to put a, an article on the town um, meeting in August. And so we'd like to hear from, I see the other side. If there's, I see that there are a lot of people that represent mm -hmm. Cooks. And by the way, I'd like to thank Cooks for all they've done for the town. They have done so much for the town. They, help with the floats, if somebody has a problem with their mooring, if, if their barge is here, they help, they, you know, they've just been extremely helpful to the town. Yeah. Not to mention the fireworks barge that we really need. Go ahead. Yeah, they help the fishery too, or catch a lot of fish and all the fish. Well, I think it was Jason that said at this last meeting that he didn't want to make any decisions or even think about it until the fishermen weighed in. I, I right. don't even want to entertain an article anyway. I mean, you got all these folks. This is their living. If, yeah. if it is, if it is not bothering the fishing community, I say no reason. I personally see no reason why we should entertain it either. Who? Uh, what organization she works for? She works for uh, Protect Maine's Fishing Heritage Foundation, and um, I did speak to Julie. She thought she had a worthy cause. I don't know about how she feels about aquaculture. I think the point she was trying to make that I do agree with is uh, local control. That it, I mean, Cooks has been very um, aware of the fishing community and what, and what our needs are. And I guess she's concerned that some big industrial site, foundation, whatever will come in. And the state has the right to just sign the lease without any, without any local input at all. So, the one point I would have agreed with is it would have been nice if they ran it by the town, which would also run it by the fishermen, but because it's it's not always going to be cooked. That's what her point was. I mean, that was basically what I gathered. Also, she was not clear was about. Uh, we talked about the salmon fishing and the what are they called? Fin something. Fin, 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 fin fish. Yeah. Yeah. And then I said, well, what about mussels? What about oysters? What about those things? And she said, they were not so specific about that. So it seemed a bit muddled. And personally, I remember the salmon pens in Johnson Bay. And I remember them being horribly overcrowded and miserable. So I didn't have an objection with that as long as, you know, if you're going to do salmon pens, don't overstock them so you're going to have to feed them tons of antibiotics and junk. So, but the presentation was not clear, and that was what my problem was. Well, I, oh, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Um, 
So I'm Jennifer Robinson. I work for Pocahontas Culture. I'm the compliance officer. Um, I know when Chris was here, he spoke about specifically DMR, but we are also regulated by the Department of Environmental Protection. We have an Army Corps of Engineers permit. So the Army Corps of Engineers goes through National Marine Fisheries Service as well as U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So it's, it's not just DMR that regulates us. We are regulated. I mean, we put in our stocking densities, and they either get approved or they don't. Um, so all of our stocking densities are regulated. Um, as far as speed, we have to have... Um, underwater cameras in all of our pens to monitor the heat. We do environmental monitoring under all of the pens. All that information from the environmental <coughs> monitoring gets submitted to DEP as well as the services, which is U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and National Marine Fisheries Service. So we are regulated. Um, I don't know if that answers some of those. Well, that questions. was something that I was going to just say before you wanted to speak. That the <laughs> gentleman that she brought, that was a um, retired DMR yeah. person, yeah. spent a long time stressing that suppose, supposedly there wasn't enough regulation, that there were like two and a half people in DMR that had, wasn't that, isn't that what you got out of it? Yeah. And so yeah. I'm glad you're saying that because we didn't hear, this, we didn't hear any other side. And this was just, she called up and wanted to be on the agenda, and okay, well, we don't deny people being on the agenda. She is, she is, uh, she's going around to all the local towns. Um, she is doing that. She's, I live in Pembroke, and she's gone to Pembroke. I know others live in Perry. She's come to Perry as well. Yeah. See, it seems to me she just wants support <coughs> for Frenchman's Bay. Yeah. That's all I kept hearing is Frenchman's Bay. Frenchman's so that, well, that's, we did hear a lot about Frenchman's that's Bay. That's probably yeah. a lot of this, it's stemming from that, from, I don't know if you guys have heard of American Aqua Farms, but there's there's a project that they're proposing down in that area. And I think it's two sites that are 75 acres each, so they're larger than what any of our sites are. Um, is this the one in Belleville, is it Bucksport? No, Gouldsboro. Right, yeah. Gouldsboro. Yeah, Gouldsboro. Okay. Amanda? You want to say something? Well, yeah, Frenchman. It's in Frenchman's face. I heard you mention that you guys were talking about issues with local control. Is that something that you actually want it to go after? There's other avenues to go through than putting on a moratorium. Like, many of you know, I'm on the Shellfish Advisory Council for DMR, and they also have an aquaculture version. It can be a topic that can be brought up at any of their meetings and have them go through because I believe that's more of a regulatory issue than it actually is a legislation issue. So it could be something that could be added to the application process as a suggestion. You're right, you're right about that. I mean, I don't think we're interested in like regulating anything. We just don't want some huge industrial company to come but in. But it would be and have the state give them acres and acres of the bottom up and then, then hurt the fishing ground. It would also be the avenue to go if you're looking for them to make it a actual policy that DMR has to be more proactive. Which is legislative. As, that is legislative then. Yeah. Well, I, I, have something, I have something to add. We used to have four times, at least four times more pens in the water around here than we have now. Tracy, you fished all your life and Tia. You fished all your life. Did it ever affect you guys at all? When there's no fish in the water, me as an ocean fisherman, we lose price, we lose product. It's not there. So the pen our, well, our percentage is there when the fish are in the water here. We have to have the feed, whatever it takes, to grow our... And it's just not me. You go to McFadden as an RCA when the urgent season starts. Okay, what about me? $100 bills go to that place. A lot. Oh, yeah. Just through the whole town. Through the whole town. Exactly. You take it away, <laughs> wherever they want. You wanted to speak? Go ahead. I, everyone's concerned about the, the fish and so on, but we really need to be concerned about the community. I'm a small business owner. I support Cooks, and Cooks has an umbrella of hatcheries and food north, and I couldn't function without Cooks. So the urchin divers and the scholar divers, and we also, so we fill air, we also fill air for Quebec's fire department. So if we had to close the 
fire department would have to escape filling air somewhere else. So there are over 215 people in this area that work for Cook's Aquaculture. So has anyone taken a look at the ripple effect that that would have on all of the businesses here and people spending their money here? That's detrimental to the back. Well, the thing is, I've, I've raised a family here, and I know how hard it is, and I know how bad we need a company like Cook's. That's awesome. I know this. I agree. Now, my grandchildren are being raised here, and it's damn hard to raise a family in this town to, to restrict anybody like Cook's is foolishness. This woman <coughs> just was kind of out of her mind, if you ask me. I mean, I believe the uh, uh, first thing they were that's a completely different thing. Uh, it's yeah. not even close to what, you know. Well, also, that's a whole different operation? Or yeah. yeah. We uh, are really glad you're all here because yeah. we, well, she came and took us by surprise. We really didn't have any idea of what yeah. we, you know, why she was here. So we read a little and we thought we put it on the agenda without her here, you know, so the town can have feedback, and I see that we're not for it. I mean, we have a business that's right on the water. We she? love it. Where she? We love it to hear the boats and shit from out in the morning, but, you know. Uh, and we encourage more people. Our heritage, I mean, we've got to have it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I do want to, as part of Lake Wendell, anyone who's when anybody applies for a DMR lease, I spend years since we've applied, so when I, we actually we have a couple of renewals in your town coming up in a couple of years for a couple of our leases. The town actually um, has a chance to comment. I know that they reach out to Harbor Masters, the Harbor Committee, for their comments. So I'm not saying that you could restrict it from coming in, but they do ask for the town's input and local, like the, they'll go to Harbor Committee meetings and ask for them, their input as well. And that's where she went first. She went to the Harbor Board and they sent it, sent her over to the select board. And, and we put it out to the town. And that, that's how, that's as far as we've gotten. And yeah. it, it seems pretty obvious to me that it's not a great idea. We appreciate you guys we are being reached out to. You do, you guys, do, they, do you ever sit down and do a round table or uh, a debate, a, a public debate about this? Because um, it would seem face to face might be a good way to go. Go ahead. Yeah. She, she's come to some of our meetings. We had a meet hearing in Southwest Harbor six months ago, and she came to the meeting and uh, made her case. Um, George Wynn was out of at the time and made a presentation. Do you mean with her specifically or just in community kind of? No, in a community. I mean, because yeah. it seems to me like she's bouncing around from select board to select board. And then you're going to come around and do the whole thing. But maybe it would you do accomplish more if you did a face-to-face -face and so debated there, issues. So there is a group coming around Sea Grant and the Maine oh, yeah. Culture Association and DMR yeah. are setting up meetings to go around to different communities to talk to them. Yeah. She has quite a lot of this information. Yeah, do you work with... Uh, I work with folks. Yeah, the Sea Grant... <coughs> Yeah, from the, the college. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Can I, uh, so maybe you'll be able to help me understand something. So is is Maine the only state that does uh, water leasing without any input from any place? I mean, do you, does all states do it that way, or? So Maine absolutely does it have input from the I, I'm, I'm not saying that, but I mean, it, DMR is who leases the water in the states of Maine, our understanding. With? 12 other different governments. But, uh, but is that how it is in all other states is kind of my question. Is there anything exceptional about Maine in regards to that? We would have sites in Virginia and North Carolina that say you can walk in there. Okay. It's not, it's not the same department, so that's all, it's all something different. But yeah, the, the, the states. states are involved Okay, because I mean, the impression that I got from the woman who presented to us before, um, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say she was anti anything, but she was, um, more um, thinking that the town could do something around the state behavior of being like the sole decision maker, um, but also recognizing that um, even if we do the ordinance, it probably has no bearing because we don't make the leases on the water, you know? So uh, that was kind of, I didn't quite. Yeah, that was her point. Right. I, you know, you know, I, I, got out of it. I didn't quite understand all of that, but I was just curious in regards to 
you know, is Maine different than any place else? Or, it, and since you were here, I figured I'd ask. Yeah. No, it, Maine, Maine is actually seen as the place that does it best in America. Huh. How long has there been salmon cages in the water right around here? How many years? 1980s, early 1980s. Okay. It has never affected clamming or fishing whatsoever. In my personal experience, I nope, would say... I'm just saying that as a fact. No, I'm saying, in my personal experience, I'm from Southern Maine, and when I moved here and the process and plants and everything were all still going on, there was so much wild stuff in the bays here. So, I, I mean, nutrients is nutrients, right? It just Since the herring industry is closed, we're seeing a little bit more because of the salmon the feed and stuff, you know, you're getting a little bit more coming in. Uh, ground fish and stuff, and I think it's great. Well, I, I know, remember when I was tied up with, with that ground marks, that we were talking about the, the way the pilings are being deteriorated faster than they used to be because of the worm activity. And somebody said to me, that's because the water is cleaner here now, that it was filthy when you had all the fisheries and all the uh, smoke houses and the canning stuff because you were throwing fish guts and all kinds of stuff in the water. You were, throw, you were throwing trash. Tr and trash. We, and, we uh, dumped that trash up. Caca. We got a lot of caca <laughs> in the water. <laughs> 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 and and, and now it's joint, much right? cleaner. <laughs> There's nothing else for the worms to feed on. I would so. like to see the half board and the board of selectmen go with 110 percent with okay well there's no doubt about it Alex. tobacco i mean mr jobs we can't afford to lose any these that's folks all are i need to hear these <laughs> folks are responsible we all know it cooks is a good company they're responsible it doesn't hurt the clamming doesn't hurt the fishing helps the community gives us much needed jobs i mean every time somebody comes into this town tries to help us out this, the industry goes out of business. The smokehouse, the sardine industry, that was all from people trying to help us out. We don't need their help. Federal regulation. Period. So I'd like to ask Cooks, let's say um, hypothetically another competitor uh, of your size and stature would want to come in, go to the state and get a lease and come up here. Would that have any effect? I mean, would you, well, I'm just, I'm just, hypothetically, I think that's, you've been here, and I don't think Cooks has ever bothered anybody, he's done nothing but help the town. I think that the only thing I would look forward to in the future is a large company as your competitor, I don't know how well the waters are, I don't, I'm sure they, the waters are great here. And, and it's Basically, we'd like you to get larger. So if, so if, the, <laughs> state, so if the state gave the lease to a large company that was your competitor, would that affect you? Because we well, don't have any control over that. I guess what, what we would say is that we're not opposed to competition. Um, there were, how many guys, how many other companies here at one time? Well, there was a lot, but yeah. in the early 2000s, there was three different companies. So we're not opposed to competition, but we want them to follow the same regulations. Well, well, no, it, it becomes hard, like, because you're, like, we're in this bay, well, in all the bays that we operate in, we're all in, all out, right? Like, how farmers have crop rotation and they're constantly rotate. that's what, we do the same thing. So it just makes it harder because that's our business plan. We hope if someone else came in, they'd follow suit the same way. So sure. that would be our, you know, concern. And that might that. speak to her local control, that that may help you in that, in that sense. But I don't think we have to do a moratorium for No, we, we don't have to do a moratorium for um, uh, a say in a, in a new lease without having to have. I would think you know some kind of um, letter to our hearing. representatives or something on the yes. state level in regards to the importance of yeah. towns being involved in leases. You know. um, in the very first meeting that that any company has to do when they first start even looking at a lease is they have to have what they call municipal meetings. And so you sit down with the selectmen from the town. That is the very first meeting before you can put an application in or anything. 
guidance of our team. So in the 80s, that would have been done with the select board of Quebec? So I don't, in the 80s, I'm not sure if it was the same pilot. I wasn't involved. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of looking at the fishermen, like in the 80s, when they come up to the town, you know? <laughs> they had a meeting down in the gym down here in the back. They did. Most of them was over before. Um, so, so that, that answers my question. Yep. I mean, if they have to come and explain, like, a new person with a new lease, what, they, what their plans are, then I don't see any reason for it. So a purely uh, selfish yeah. question. Are you going to be farming mussels or, or um, oysters? So I'd really like us to get oysters, personally. I know. Um, we've, we've dabbled some um, with mussels. We've done some integrated, um, yeah, multiprofix. Um, the problem is it's taking up the space from the salmon, and a lot, like if you put too many mussels too close to the salmon, then it takes up the oxygen. Um, now Dallas, they tried that down the peacock, didn't they? Isn't that what they had going down the peacock for a while? Yeah. They had a hatchery and stuff, yeah. Yeah. But it was with the urchins. It was with the urchins and stuff. We've, uh, Fudge Creek Island, um, I think it's actually in Eastport, not on the Quebec side, but there is, um, there is a gentleman there that's doing mussels. And I know um, there was some mussel leases up past our South Bay site. I think those are on the back as well. Yeah, they're doing them on ropes. Yeah. yeah. They're like vertical. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I just had a question about the oysters. If you were yeah. these guys were to do oysters, would you do half oysters? We're not doing this. Well, I like it. And the only reason why I'm making this argument is I grew up in New Haven, Connecticut, which back in the 50s was like oyster capital yeah. of the world. And I grew up around oysters, and oysters are worse than barnacles, but bigger. And for an area that hasn't had oysters in over a century, it will make a mess. Yeah, we don't have any so, so, on doing so, But there, there is, down in Damascata, those parts of Maine, there is quite a good oyster farming industry there. Blue Hill, uh, yeah, Blue Hill over there, this is where Crystal got her start with the Polonia Muscle Farm. Um, so there are other areas, but we, Cook, are not into doing that in Maine uh, at this time. Your next question should be, do you have any use for green crabs? <laughs> actually, actually I, that was, I was ready for this woman to be here and make an argument on mercury, and I was going to bring up green crabs. <laughs> Can you feed them to your salmon? <laughs> There's been work done. Nah, yeah. I, I had this argument laid out. <laughs> I can always bring up my switch. No, no, no. Why not move on it? Move on it. Maybe we can compose a letter to our state rep or something. You know, just let it die. So we put it on the referendum. We gave it an audience. We gave both sides the audience. I'm totally convinced. Thank you all for showing up. Thank you for coming in. I've never worked for a salmon company. But as a fisherman, I know it helps. Well. Because I've been here before he was here, and then he was here for a while, and then they left. You can tell the difference, and, huh? And, mm -hmm. Yeah, then they come back, and it's like, geez, I wish they'd put some more pins in, Roger that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys going to put any more in? Really? I mean, I, that, that was going to be my next question. Are you, that's you that's because you're a lobster fisherman, right? Oh, no. We don't have any applications. We're not, no applications in the process now. We have not heard any applications in this area. We'd love to have well, let's, let's talk a little bit. We'll work this out. Yeah, we'd love, love to have you guys around here. Yeah. I just want some meat. Anything taxable. Because <laughs> 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 Renee has that it's, point of view. It's job. Right in the town money, but we need to have people who work. We just want some whatever helps the fishermen. So it, if it helps the fishermen, it's we'll not just the fishermen. We need people. Well, and jobs. Well, jobs, absolutely, Jason. Absolutely. 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 Absolut
Yes, you can remind them all tomorrow at that public hearing at 545 that you need townspeople to show up for um, that uh, funding for the lunch program. Mm -hmm. And singed enough. Hearing. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, school board's having a public hearing tomorrow at 545. School? Yep. Is it one tomorrow? Is that what they're talking about? I thought they're talking about math. Yeah, what, what, honey? What's the public hearing for, for the school tomorrow? Oh, it's just a, it's a, it's a finale. It is. Oh, it's it is. just yeah. a finale on paying for the... Yeah. Paying for lunch. Oh, yeah. 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 And now the whole part meeting clears out. Recess. Recess. They saw the warrant signing. Now, was yeah. now we'll go back to normal. John. <laughs> and <Yeah. laughs> hey, man, they're coming from Connecticut. I'm happy you left too. Yeah. Well, I I left early, early in my age. Well, no, no, we just spouses. I used to go door, door to door down by the uh, seaside. Spouses and the do. That's rough. I lived in where they call Fairhaven, which I was emancipated at 16, and I lived in an apartment building they called the Skittles. Amanda, in the 70s, you were living In the 70s, my parents were in high school. <laughs> okay, so we are, we're going to go to the senior fuel donation now. Okay. It's a... Uh, we were contacted by an anonymous, um, well, there was an anonymous donor at the Boston Foundation, the and they've already given us the money. Who's that? It? So we put it right into That's the senior fund. Any parameters? And there? how much no. money? Thirty thousand. Mm. Wow. So no stipulation on how many no. years no. to spend. They there. contacted. They they nice. called and they wanted to know what they they talked to me. They wanted to know what our um, senior fuel fund was like. And mm -hmm. told them. And the next. Week we got an email. Nice. Really? Uh, nice. Yeah. Where did that come from? Boston. The Boston Foundation had an anonymous donor. Nice. Excellent. That's excellent. Well, we so thank the anonymous uh, donor. Yep. Yeah, if you're a Lubeck resident and you're over 60 and you've got a quarter of a tank of fuel and you've tried other means, then give us a call up here, talk to Suzette, and. Uh, did we and talk about not, that included it's, it's some not just, too, right? It's not just yeah. fuel, it's right. propane, and it's also and it's wood. electric. Pellets. And it could be wood. Could be wood. Yeah. Fuel could be wood. source. Any fuel no, source. Heating, heating source. Yeah. Any heating source yeah. that you can't provide for yourself. It's not old tires. And it has to be equivalent to like 200 gallons. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Is it 200 that. gallons? I think it's 100, 100 gallons. gallons. 100, 100 gallons. gallons. Equivalent, yeah. equivalent to whatever 100 gallons is on the market. Yep. Which is going up. Which is going up, so... Well, that's really great news. Encouraging. There is yes. hope in humanity. Very <laughs> somebody resigned from the planning we board? We have two resignations from the planning board. Uh, Wanda Matthews and uh, Patricia Van Rollins. She was the alternate. Wanda got bumped up to a regular board member, but due to her schedule, she's not able to fulfill. So who does that leave on the planning it board? It leaves Sharon Yates. Uh, Rhonda Welcome and the new uh, Alex Henry. Oh, yeah. Right. And there are two members, which goes on to the third item on the agenda. We'll just go to that. Do that. Okay, yeah. so you all received the email that I sent a few weeks ago. Yeah. And that was sent to the, um, and this is stemming from frustration from the, the, the planning board. Are there any the alternates board? besides Sharon, Rhonda, and Alex? So we just have the three? It's, we're looking for two There's more. five members and there are two, two alternates. Right, that's what they were allowed. Right. Yeah. There are two that have been consistently absent due to the winter. They're away. Uh, there is a policy, and I, I included yeah. it in the email here. This is directly from the ordinance, the planning board ordinance, that uh, uh, if a member fails, a vacancy can occur when a member fails to attend three consecutive regular meetings. After that happens, uh, the chair board, a chairperson, 
shall immediately advise you, and that's what has taken place. Jerry says it's been statistically absent. So you have to have a hearing. Municipal officers may remove members of the planning board by unanimous vote, has to be unanimous, for cause after notice and hearing. So the email was the notice. And this is the, the hearing. hearing is now. And we're talking Cecil and Mars and both I, long time I, I members think, of the planning board. Yeah, they're long time members. But and because of that, they should know the the urgency of this particular this town time is when we're going into a comprehensive plan. plan. We, we have to have people and, that are here. You know, it's I nothing know to do with them. Right. Yeah. We appreciate right, right, their service. It's not, yeah. it's not them. It's but just there's not they're the not. The world here. doesn't stop and move back now. Who's going to replace them? Right. Well, we can advertise that if that's what you want me to do. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. So I just want to yeah. confirm they were both contacted. Yeah. By email. And and no response from either. Um. Yes, I got a response from Debbie. She's not able. See, what changed is the Zoom. Well, that was for budget committee. Right. Anyway. There's plenty of Zoom. Zoom. Well, you can't. It's not a state of emergency right. anymore. No. State in Arizona. No Zoom is allowed. And to Cecil's defense, he did come to you in December. He let you know he was not going to be here. Right. So he was upfront about it. It's just not working. Yeah. No. Because there's so many Nothing has issues. been done for the comprehensive plan. Nothing for six months. Right. And I think Cecil, in fairness, he may have been on the misconception that, um, I know he was, that the Washington County Council of Governments was still in existence and would it's step not, right in. And we would not, behoove us to do it ourselves anyway, because right. they don't well, live in Lubeck, and they're not going to have somebody from, excuse me, but from Calus that is going to tell Lubeck yeah, how no, they that's, are going to manage their comprehensive plan. The chaos, but that's their function, and that's what they did the last The chaos time. of the board has led to Nobody resignation. Else to do it. Patricia Van Rollins has agreed to stay on the comprehensive plan part of it. You did have two members set up to be from the planning board on the new comprehensive plan committee. So but now committee. you've got Alex, and Patricia is willing to stay on that. So I'm just leaving that alone. She's already Well, it has, to, it has to be two from, two from the, uh, well, uh, two from the planning well, board, two from the school board. Actually, at the, at the planning board meeting that we were at, that then they were having the challenge of not having their members in place. Um, we read, we read from the piece that the select board can change that statement of two people yeah. from the planning board. The select board created it. Right. Yeah, well, so, we it so, on. so we could from the planning board. this year just recognize we're oh, not sure. getting two people. So is it people. Alex that wants to? Yeah, Alex is on it from the planning board. Yeah, I get that it was just out of being right. fair that we yeah. did that. Right. If they right. don't have, if, if, let's, let's say they could have up to two. Right. Which right. means that they don't have a second one. They don't. They, they don't. So up. now we have the people Patricia identified for the say. right for the comprehensive planning. So we have two open slots for pl um, planning, planning board. board. And how many do we have now on comprehensive plan? Comprehensive plan is established as a nine person, yeah. right? Nine. Yep. And we're all and we're I'm sending no, out an email. We're all set. That's um, full. The and we're good. Plan is full. And which means seven with two alternates, correct? Or it's nine, four, It's one. nine. We have nine members nine, that we so can, that you have yeah. to have So we five. can work with five yeah. Yeah. any time. Okay. You know, that's if yeah, you have a nine member. Good. And that's I'm going to send out an email actually next yes. week. That's why I talked to Rachel. And, and you're going to meet every other week, right? Well, we're going to try to have one meeting in March. And then we'll figure out a schedule. And we'll figure out who's doing what. That's what so we yeah. did. Save our voice every other week for two years to get something done. He's on it. Yeah. Now, these folks being absent from the planning board, what is it holding up? What we're just plan. talking well, about. Well, actually, no, actually, but what else? No, what they identified well, 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 needs to be updated. Right. The shoreline zoning. The shoreline zoning ordinance needs to be well, updated before. Stuff. It's got a deadline for the it's, uh, August meeting. It's nothing. It's nothing to do with the building by it anyway, though. I mean, as far as permits, because that's well, scary. They don't have well, I think that's scary. No, that's scary. Right? A lot that's of scary. scary. That's 100 percent scary. Yeah. Yeah. So there are four slots. You've got two. Right. And, and then we'll, the two we'll, alternates. We'll, we really need two right away. But I'll so advertise for all four. Why don't you put it on town website and then share it to the Rubeck Community Bulletin Board where all these people can use. Yep. A question for the day. In your experience, if the town is looking for grants from the state, how much weight does the comprehensive plan carry? Um, it carries. Um, if I you know, don't have a current one, does it affect your ability? I believe it does. Um, 
I'm not sure. We haven't really crossed that bridge yet. But in the other meetings that I've been in, it could. It could. It, it might not. It, it's a plus. It's a. Uh, depends on the grant. It depends on the grant. It's an update. Flying one. Too. But yes, it's a valid point. Yeah. 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 If you want to accept the resignation, yes, and the uh, accepting the, the res resignation, all, right. all in favor, and then we have to um, have Renee post to see if we can get people to. No, we also have to vote on um, terminating the two. Who can't I think they naturally have resigned. Yeah, I, I think I they're thought accepting they, their resignation. They resigned. Well, Cecil and Debbie resigned. A vacancy would occur, so maybe not, maybe no, present. I thought yeah. you said we had to uh, unanimously vote. Yes, you do. Okay. On the, on the hearing. It's nothing to do with yeah. the people that resign. Yeah. Okay. I'm not ready to get rid of anybody who you know you have a question. I mean, oh, I think well, then, it's not like they're, they're here. Yeah. No. Well, well, you can't yeah. look for replacements if you don't have an open. Yeah. So, from what I'm reading here, actually, I think I want to make a motion that we remove um, the two members of the planning board Deb, Deb Holmes and Cecil Moore's um, for non-attendance, as noted in the ordinance, that they failed to attend at least 75 or miss three consecutive meetings. Uh, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Any opposed? Unanimous. That's the one board that selectmen can't be on. You can right. only be planning or selectmen. You can't be both. Right. That's right. And they just have to do that. Is that the, you know, the shoreline ordinance? That hopefully, they hire two people soon. Okay. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. That came to an exciting yeah. meeting. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Um, I uh, had to relicense for my uh, growing and uh, resale space uh, back in January. You all know I've been in business since 2016, December. Um, there wasn't a lot of rules back then, but I've been right on, on it since the ground floor. Uh, in 2019, I believe, they passed a new set of laws where if you're going to open up a new space after that time, uh, the town would have to draft an ordinance um, to allow the type of spaces. Um, if you were in business before that, your grandfather, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, there was an error on their end saying uh, that I opened up in 2020, which we all know I didn't. We all remember the summer of 2017 when I had my spent downtown. Um, so basically, they said, if I can just get a letter stating that the town of Lubeck was aware I've been in business um, before the rule change in 2018, then I can, you know, be granted. I've already been granted my um, license oh, to, to grow and everything. Like an so I have, copies of, I have copies uh, well, of the email if anybody wants to see. I'm all good. I'm all good. Great, great. Yeah. Yes, I remember you down there. Thank you. Letter to you I, I will make a motion to redraft the letter for Justin Foley and his shop, stating that he's been in business way before 21. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so, well, I think downtown it was 2017, and everybody knew that. 2017. Yeah. That worked. Yeah, perfect. Yes. Yeah. 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 All in favor? Thanks very much. Can we have Renee right? Tomorrow and. Can we have Renee right? Of course, we're going to say Renee. We don't have to say that. Right. Can we just have Renee? Oh, do it. She yeah, do you want to give me authority to yeah, sign? I yes, I would give Renee yeah, authority yeah, to write and send it. Okay. We are right. 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 In other words, she's going to have to write it, and then we all have to sign it before we can have it. And yeah. now she can just do it. Yeah, that's why we did that. Yeah. That's what there you go. Thank, Thank you for doing it. Thank you so much, everyone. I really yeah, appreciate your time. Well, have a good one. I got a message. Everybody who can have a job here is great. And yes, they're always this exciting, so you can come back and have a great one. Sorry to make it. Let's take care, care everyone. Yeah, it's about, it's a little bit. Uh, 20,000, 20, 200,000, right? 200 million? So our portion is 331,535, right? It's a little, it's about 25, a little over 25, 20,000 more than last year. And why are we having to sign this to put it in, in, in the budget? 
this was they they do this at least. Actually, Jim informed me that he usually does it, but he I had him discuss it with Rick. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, discusses, and he said to yeah. So this is what is signed every right year. We have to agree to. Yeah. That's our share. That's the three hundred thirty-one thousand five hundred thirty-five. Would you say the number again, please? Uh, three thirty-one five thirty-five. And that's the total for. That's our, our share. That's okay. Lyman's share. To you want the total? Or right. Blue back. It's total. <laughs> I mean, blue back. That's Sorry. Right. That's including the increase to the negative measure. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, make a motion that we sign the uh, county tax. I and make a motion that you sign the county tax as written. Okay, we can give a second. Second. All in favor? <laughs> I make the motion. <laughs> Can I just, it's not I like a question. cooperative board. I just, want, I, just, I just have one question, and then I wish Jim was almost here. Because when I was reading this earlier, it states that they see our valuation as $200,650,000. That's just fine. And I, and I wondered where they got that. The state provides those. Mm -hmm. We've been asking that one for a long time. You know, and I, I just was <clears throat> curious. When that was established, 92 miles of shoreline. But they, they yeah, want. okay, but you know, they, they, so they redo it every year. They oh, assess we've down here. Now, now I'm on this, where's our reassessment at? Yeah, we, um, well, yeah, I know you were working to choose these your work days, but um, the budget blame, committee yeah. came, uh, is contemplating putting on an article for another hundred thousand dollars to couple with the hundred we had set aside so we can we can afford to hire somebody because the because the bid came in at two nine over what we had set aside. That's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna well Sloan Pool the Sloan Pool can put an article on requesting that and then we just have to pretend to see if I want to do that. And hopefully the bids don't go up between well I think we have a hundred and ten now. Uh, well, what is it? We do the same, the same amount. Both? When was the last time you heard about 94? 93, something like that. But you've got another option. If we happen to have another special town meeting, um, you could take that money out of undesignated. We're up to over a million in undesignated now. Um, well, we, which is comfortable, which is where we want it well, to be. If we, we, we mean, could we take it out it. of undesignated, let's look what the bottom line is in budget right. first before we offer it undesignated. Well, I'm just curious, should we just. So you don't want to have to wait till August. No, that's what I'm just thinking. <laughs> if we if we made the decision to take it out and does designate it, we could accept one of them bids that we could do that. Yeah. Well, if they're still valid, they're well, still valid I'm, for thirty days. Well, I'm just, I know, but I'm just saying, you know, rather than oh, waiting for maybe. town meeting, like maybe we get out of stock. You know, we just need yeah, another special town meeting. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. okay. All right. Well, uh, that's all I have. Okay. That's something we can just vote on then. That's another addition. Do you want to set up a special town meeting to address the fact that we haven't been able to get a reassessor here? I think I think we should. I think we should and see okay, if they so would approve well, approve for us to take it out of undesignated so that and maybe we can check on the bids to see if they would still honor them or anytime April. I mean ask them. We didn't put it we can we can have the legislative body. No, we didn't put it in the they just can say no. It's, it's <laughs> not gonna get any cheaper. Right, no. but that's a really just play out. We didn't so, put an expiration date. Uh, uh, what's uh, uh, your calendar like? I How soon can we have the calendar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. What's the next April? What's it? We might have a selection call. April. Do um, you want the same day as the select? We should do it at, in April because we've got budget right now. April? I mean, it's all in March. I don't care. I mean, you didn't do it before April. a select board meeting? Yeah. Well, you do it. Uh, when do we? Yeah. When do we change back to like six? We could do it at five. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We, we t well, that's, that's after April. Oh, so that's April 27th. So let's do it that way. So okay, we go back to six. Yeah. Yeah. So we go back work. to five. Yeah. Okay. And then so I make the motion that we have, have a special select board meeting to address the um, tax assessor. Issue and any and pos and there may be something else. Renee will make sure that we'll there isn't anybody. At, sometimes there's things working that, yeah, work, that are waiting to be on. Special I, tell, yeah. I can't think of one right okay. now. But okay, all in favor. And this would I be on the night good. of the 27th. Well, as Jason said, we go back to six, so we can have five. Five. Yeah. 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 Ye
Because I know Dan's going back to work. Too, so. so we're going to get it before we're all going back to work. When are you going back no, to work? Back to work. Going back to work? Two, one and a half weeks. That's cool. That's nice. I bet you're happy, right? No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Uh, committee updates, anything interesting? No, nothing particularly interesting. I'll just give a quick safe harbor update. Um, I requested a uh, change in scope, and they got back to me and want all kinds of documents, all the bids, and the engineers are reviewing it now. So this hopefully, through more ma Marad, Marad, the Marad yeah. team. Yeah, right. so they're reviewing the request, and I'm, I'll nudge them along next week, see if I can get a, cool. an answer. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So, you know, you've got to give them a little bit of time now. <laughs> to look at it. They did say yes, we'd like to, all this other stuff to review. But And luckily we had a consultant that pulled it all together. There were so many papers involved, they had to put it in a special, like a special um, website that you could, that they could upload, like 400 pages. Oh my goodness. And then they, he invited all five of the people to get all of that. So. It'll just cough up another six million or ten million. Well, Together. you know, Jason, the thing is, when we got to 24, by the 24 million three, whatever the 24 million dollar one was, if it had been what our scope was, I think I would have gone out and cried for the, the, the money. But and we did look for it, and we found that we were going to have to, the town was going to have to put the money put money in. And he was saying the marine, um, the DOT marine person said that he would be able to give us. More easy, more easily three million than six million. But even so, they they look to the town to put that twenty percent in. Twenty right. percent, even at three million, is six hundred thousand. Yeah. So I thought there was two two well, two choices: more more money or less scope. And we kept the length of the the length of the breakwater could not be compromised, which is what happened with that lower bid. So that's where we are. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. So, any public comment? How about uh, we're going into executive session for personnel matters M1 MRSA 4056A? Is that a, is that a uh, motion? Yes. By you? Yes. Let me clarify that for Rachel. And, you, and you've got a second, right? Second to, and I, I second. 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 <laughs> All in favor? You're dancing to the room. It shouldn't take five I just don't want Rachel putting in the name. I'd be out in five minutes, Ed. Oh. That's right. It's not going to be a long session. I thought she was just trying to reward it. <laughs> <laughs>